Hello, gentle people. If this is your first time visiting my channel, or if you are a returning subscriber, welcome to this Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. I hope that you will see and hear something that inspires you to create something beautiful. I'm Hazel, a retired educator turned resin artist, and of course I like the term entrepreneur where I am now trying to turn my passion into profit and every week I share how I create the products that are available in my Etsy shop and my Shopify store. In video number 161 I created a set of gorgeous square beverage coasters using plastic wrap and chameleon mica powders to create what's called the crushed velvet or crinkle effect look. I was truly thrilled. Let me say it again. I was thrilled with the results and so decided this week to make a matching serving tray. So if you want to see how I created this one-of-a-kind textured serving tray, keep watching. If you would like to purchase the demo tray, you can shoot me an email at sparrow at sparrowartvibes.com or you can just purchase the tray at Sparrow Art Vibes shop on Etsy. You can stop the video and scan the QR code on the screen to visit my shop. Also, if you are inspired by my video, please do like, comment, share, and of course, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. So, let's take a look at the materials we need to make the crushed velvet or crinkle looked serving tray. All right, gentle people, let's take a look at the materials that we need to create our crushed velvet, uh, crinkle look, um, our textured is what I'm going to call it, serving tray that goes with our... Um, beverage coasters. So we have a silicone mold for a tray. Uh, you can see it's kind of old. It's yellowed. Then we need our resin. Again, I am back to using Envirotex Light. This is the Part A resin. This is the Envirotex Light Part B hardener. We will need a large measuring cup. We will need a medium measuring cup. Large stir stick. Nitro gloves. And for mica powders, we are going to be using the Let's Resin Black. And this is a package of Nodway uh, Chameleon powders six colors but we're using the same ones we used um, on the beverage coasters so we are using the purple this is purple sky blue this is the blue purple and of course, my favorite all time because I use this with um, the beach thing, the blue cyan. I love this. And we will need some plastic wrap. So I have clear plastic wrap right here. And we will need handles. And these are handles that I actually made um, last night to use on today's mold. So we need some handles, and these are resin handles that I tried to match. So our handles, oops. Oh, and then I forgot. We need a brush to be able to uh, 
paint the mica powder onto the tray. And that's it. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do um, is dust the inner edge of this mold. Now, a lot of times when you do trays, you do the tray, you make it, once it's finished, then you take a paint pen and go along the outside edge. I am not going to use a paint pen on the outside edge because I don't like trying to paint these curves. So I am going to take my really favorite uh, blue cyan mica powder and I am going to dust the inner edges of this mold. So I am going to turn it sideways so I can see what I'm doing and then you won't have to paint it when it's finished this mica powder will stay on this edge and give it this really soft pretty shimmery And as I said, <clears throat> by doing it this way, you don't have to um, go back and paint the edges once this is done, once this is finished. And when I use the um, paint pens, I always go back anyway and uh, put gloss varnish over the pens just because if the trays are being handled a lot um, that paint pen stuff will peel off uh, and so you want it to stay permanently so I always add the gloss varnish to it and that's like two steps painting it in one step and then varnishing it in another step to seal it and this way um, your edge is already done I'm just going to take a paper towel with some alcohol on it and just go in here and just wipe along this inside to get rid of a lot of the excess. This will be the bottom of the uh, tray, so you're not going to actually see this, but we're going to wipe some of it out anyway just to make it look neat and finished. hit a couple of spots here when you're white go back and wipe. make sure you double check that you didn't wipe out any of uh, your mica powder when you were cleaning the bottom oh I got a whole spot right there touching up a couple of the spots that I hit when I was wiping this out. Okay, that looks good. Oh, there's one over there. Okay, so that's step one completed. Now we need to mix our resin. So, we are going to be <clears throat> doing this in reverse. When I did the coasters, I poured clear resin into the mold. When it cured, then I dusted it with the mica powder, and then I poured 
the black background. Because this gets turned right side up, that works. The tray, on the other hand, I am not going to flip over, so I'm going to do it in the reverse order. I am going to pour black mica powder, dust, and then pour a clear top coat. So, and so we need 400 milliliters of the black um, resin. So my measuring cup has been marked at 200 and 400. So we are going to pour 200 milliliters of the Part B hardener. And then 200 milliliters of the Part A resin. And I forgot to remind you that you need to follow manufacturer's instructions. We are using the Envirotex Light Pour On uh, Epoxy. It is a two part epoxy. And our directions, the simple, simplified directions, tell us that we need to measure equal amounts of side A and side B, which we did. And then it says stir for, hold on, let me get it for you, this is wiggling. Okay, after two full minutes of mixing, you're supposed to pour this into a second container and then it tells you using a new stir stick mix in the second container another two minutes so that's a total of four minutes now they do this double um, double mix you mix in one container stir it put it in another container stir it and then pour it I do not do the double mix I just mix it all at one time so our timer is set for four minutes and we will stir this for four minutes. going to add our black mica powder to this. All right. And so we are then just going to pour this black into our mold. And once again, you can see that my table is not level. Let me put some sticks under here. You see it's higher on this side and it filled this side before it filled the other side. So we're just going to put a couple of sticks under here and now this will go that direction. That looks better. Now that's not up on the rim over here. Oh, okay, that looks better. Now it looks more even. So we're going to use the heat gun to pop air bubbles. Okay, so now we are going to put the saran wrap on here. Um, but I need to put my handles on first. I'm going to put my handles on first. Now let me talk about my handles. I buy my handles, most of my handles, at Hobby Lobby um, because they always, once a month, do a 50% off sale. 
So I was looking for something in the blue family and didn't find anything that I really liked. So I took this one that's clear with black ends since the background here is black. Um, but after I got it home, I didn't like this one. I also purchased these uh, slightly blue. Uh, they're kind of a, a, a teal aqua. They're, they're more green than blue. But I thought these would be pretty um, since the mica powder makes it iridescent. These would be cute. But then I thought, I really, this is not comfortable for me to be lifting a tray with just these little squares. So I'm not using these. Last night, I decided to make my own handles. And I have this um, uh, curved silicone mold to make handles. And I want you to see this. So I attempted to do the handles the same way I had done the beverage coasters but again, doing it in reverse. So I poured the black mica powder into the mold. I poured this into these molds. Uh, and then I put the paper, the plastic wrap on top. Uh, after about five hours, when I went to try and take it out, it would not come out. I could not get this darn plastic. I could not get this plastic to come out. Um, it turns out it was just a matter of me being patient because when I got up this morning and I looked at this and I said, what a mess, what a waste of resin, and I started tugging at it, it actually came up. So this is what it looked like, but I don't really like that. That looks, looks too jaggedy, too, too raggedy, and it has more dents than it does mountains. But this, if you let it stay overnight well maybe yeah I'm not gonna waste time with this um, with some persistence this will this yeah see it will come out but you have to allow it to cure almost like 24 hours because like I said after five hours I couldn't get it out so anyway this was the first attempt when I couldn't get the plastic out of this, I said, the heck with that, I'll just do it again. And so I poured another set, and then this is what we have. So I did the same thing, but instead of putting the plastic wrap in it, I just let the handle set, oh, I don't know, until the resin was thick. And then I just came in and took a stir stick and just pushed it around to try and create some little mounds. Once it dried or cured, then I put the uh, mica powder on it and then I did the clear coat. So we're gonna do the same thing now. And so these, I'm going to set this right here. I'm going to set this right here and that's eyeballing it. And I don't know if you can see that that's moving, that's sliding. And so you'll have to come back in here in a little while and reposition these. But I need these here, so there are my handles. And so here's my plastic wrap. And I am only putting the plastic wrap down the middle I'm not even going to try and get around those handles or anything, just it's not worth it. So we're going to cut a piece of plastic wrap here. And we're going to take our piece of plastic wrap and we are going to just lay this in here like so. Let that drop down and then we are going to start our scrunching. This is really soft, so I'm going to leave this like this, and then I'll come back in about 15 minutes, and once this thickens some, 
and do some more scrunching. Make sure that your plastic is above the edge of your mold here. Make sure this is, otherwise it'll be difficult to get it out. Ooh. Okay, all right, that looks better. All right, so I have done a few little scrunchies. This is not scrunched as much as the beverage coasters because um, this is really soft. This, I mean, the resin is new resin, so we are going to let this set about 15, 20 minutes, and then I'll come back in here and I'll scrunch some more and see if we can get more. Oh, and when you're, look, look at here. When you're doing this, make sure you don't pull so much that you can see the bottom of the mold. All right. And so now I'm just going to move this a little bit. I want this further to this edge over here. That one's pretty good. And I don't like um, to drill holes in my resin. Uh, the handles that you buy in the store come with screws and you drill a hole and then you screw it. I am always concerned that I may crack the resin uh, by screw by drilling holes in it. The only thing I drill a hole in is my Afro Lady clock, and that's to get the clock mechanism on it. But I'm going to leave this like this for now, and then I'll come back in about 15 minutes and scrunch it a little more once this begins to thicken. All right, gloves off. So we're going to leave this for 15 minutes. I'm going to go fix me some lunch and I will be back. Okay, I am back and let's see if we can get a few more. The other thing to pay attention to is, see that air bubble right there? Uh, there's a great big air bubble right there. So I'm gonna pop that. There's a bubble there, 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 and there. And so again, we're just trying to scrunch this a little more. Now that it's, now that it's thicker, it'll hold a little better. Oops, I probably should have my gloves on because I popped that and now I've got... Just so this outer edge is not perfectly smooth. I'm trying to put a few little lifts in here, but they're not gonna hold. I'll have to come back. This is still way too soft. Just so this outer edge is not perfectly smooth, I'm trying to put a few little lifts in here, but they're not going to hold. I'll have to come back. This is still way too soft. All right, I'll be back.
Okay, gentle people, I am back. And let's see if this is uh, dried enough that the plastic will come up. It's not coming up. Oh, well. If I don't got a fold in there, let's try from the other side. Actually, let me turn this. Let me lift this and turn this. All right, let's see. If this will come up, if I have to leave it a little longer. Okay, well that's coming up in the middle. There's that big bubble I was talking about. like I have some folds is what I have some some resin folds here yep the resin leaked out um, all right, I'm gonna have to figure out how to get that loose certainly set enough to come out. Uh, let's continue on this side. Okay, looks like I have some folds. have a situation that I did not have with the coasters. Um, where is mine? Move my cuticle cutter and try and cut this out. I have a great big fold here. can actually see that but this is a whole plastic wrap underneath this handle here okay so we have plastic wrap here all right, so when you are doing this, try to make sure you don't have any folds. I have plastic wrap in folds here in creases. That's not good. So like this is one long, this goes straight across right there. So I'm going to clip that. Let's see what we can do here. Let's try and cut it out. Okay, so I have this piece sticking up here. Now this is, this is still plastic wrap on here, you see. So 
some of that may just have to stay. Uh, I've got a big air bubble right here. Let's just pop that open. Because again, we're going to put a clear coat on here. So this air bubble, this big old huge air bubble is not a problem because it will fill with resin. But we do need to trim it some. Okay, so I'm still trying to figure out how to get I start a sentence, see something, and don't complete my thought. There, this is this is still this is still plastic wrap under here. Okay, I have a, a line of plastic wrap right here. So my coasters were perfect. My coasters were perfect. This is presenting different challenges. I still have plastic wrap under. Ooh, do I still have plastic? plastic wrap under this handle. Ah. Okay, so a word of advice, be careful not to create folds. Be careful not to create folds. And if you have air bubbles like that one, just pop them. Because again, you're going to fill this with resin, with clear resin anyway. So just if you've got a big air bubble like that one, I popped it in the plastic. Uh, evidently, it did not pop in the resin, but that's okay. All right, so I'm not going to let you all watch me bother with this, but I'm gonna try and get as much of this plastic wrap out of here as I can. Although the flip side of it is it may not even matter if I'm putting resin on top of this, right? Okay, see there's a line right here. There's resin, I mean plastic wrap in this crease right here. Well, I guess today is the day we find out what happens to plastic wrap when it's uh, enrobed or encased in resin because I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time trying to get this wrap out of here. So now what we need to do is uh, dust Oh, was that a piece of plastic sticking up? I got a piece of plastic sticking up. Look at that, right there. Okay, so what we're going to... Okay, I have a long fold here. I had a fold here. I have one right there. And so I think I am going to just try and uh, dust over these and we'll see what it looks like when it's finished because I could be sitting here all night trying to pick this plastic. Trying to pick this plastic out of these creases and I don't think that's a good use of my time. Okay, so here's the decision. I am not going to spend any more time trying to pick this plastic out of these folds. I'm gonna go ahead and just get started, get this dusted and then get the clear coat poured and we'll see what the final result looks like. Okay, so we are going to get our mica powders. We have our three mica powders and we have our, um, where's our brush? And so, you know, I like this blue cyan. So we're just going to start dusting
and you could actually fill that hole in with um, actually I'm saying it and I think I'm going to just go ahead and do it instead of talk about it that air bubble right there there's one right there there's one right there I think I'm going to go and try and fill them with UV resin. But I have to leave here and go into my office because I don't have a way to connect the little UV lamp to anything in here. Yeah, let me go try that and see how that um, works. But let me hold this up. There is an hole right here. I mean it's not hole all the way through but there's a more like a crater there, there, there's a big one there, one here, and one here. And so I am going to go see, oh there's a little one right there, if I can fill those with um, UV resin and I will be back. I am back and I did um, go and attempt to fill these spots. Let me see. We've got one right there. We have this big space right here. We have another one right there. Uh, and then there's one right there. So I did go and um, attempt to fill those holes. I call them craters. They were more like craters because they didn't go all the way through. I filled those holes, or those craters as they were, with um, UV resin. And uh, where's the other one? I'm surprised this is so pliable. This is so bendy, bendy, bendy. I'm surprised. Okay, so. Um, and then I did sit and take the time, despite saying I would not do it, I did sit and I pulled plastic out of that crease, out of this crease, out of this one, and there was plastic wrap still in that one. So, so that's the best I could do with that. So now we're going to go ahead and get back to what I was originally doing, which was dusting the mold with the mica powders. So that's what I'm gonna get to. But I did take the time to fill those holes, or those craters, I'll call them. I filled the craters, and I did sit with my tweezers and my cuticle cutter and attempt to get the plastic out of um, those little folds like this one right here so I mean there's still some left in there and I don't know how it will react to resin but we're gonna find that out together we are going to find that out so again I'm just Dusting this. This is the blue cyan. And now I'm going to use the purple sky blue. And in case someone says she didn't change brushes, I'm not changing brushes because, again, this is more uh, like an ombre effect. So the colors are going to be blending anyway. really difficult um, the plastic underneath these handles I'm going back to the blue cyan over here some more of this and 
And then our third color is our blue purple. Our third color is our blue purple. Just using all three of my blues. And again, going back to my blue cyan that I like so much. Okay, so now that these colors are on here, I'm just going to pick the tray up and I'm just going to spin it so I can see it from the other side. Because with these folds, you may have missed some, I may have missed some spots. And so now I'm going to turn this upside down over the waste basket to tap off the um, excess. And let's just wipe this, the mica powder off this edge, this top edge here. All right, and so now, we are ready to pour our clear coat. Remember, we are doing this in reverse. And so we now need to mix 200 uh, milligrams of clear resin. So my cup is marked 100, 200. So we have our Part B hardener, 100 milliliters. And our Part A resin, 100 milliliters. And we are going to mix this for four minutes. Okay. Our four minutes is up. And so now we are going to just pour our clear. Make sure these sticks are under. We're just going to pour our clear resin. All right. And now we just need to make sure that this resin is up against all of these edges. sure it's underneath the handles that looks good so we need the heat gun to pop the air bubbles all right that's that we have to cover this to make sure no lint no dust no dog hair or anything gets in there um, I can say right off the bat I am glad that I redid those handles and that these handles look really, really nice against this. I, I'm glad I did that that way and not use the store-bought handles. I think that just makes that a little more um, stylized and, and impressive. So we're going to cover this and allow this to cure overnight.
gentle people, it is the next day. So we are going to uncover our tray. And this is not a reveal as reveals go because we can see what we're working with, but we're going to unmold this. And that is absolutely gorgeous. That's gorgeous. So let's see what happens. Ooh, I just tore my mold. Oh my goodness, I told you this mold was old. You see I just tore it? Wow. I just ripped my mold. So it's time for me to get a new one. Alright. Yeah, see? I just tore that. But it's old, so time for it to be replaced. And of course, again, the back of this is black. And when we turn it over, that's what we have. So that is gorgeous. Again, I am so pleased with the handles on these. I am so pleased. That is gorgeous. And uh, where are the coasters? Where's a coaster to go with that? So see, that makes a really stunning that makes a really stunning ensemble if you put these pieces together. So what we need to do to finish this off is take the Dremel and go around and uh, do these edges and then varnish those and put the rubber bumps on the back. So let me get my mask, get my Dremel. And I do want you to see when I said I don't have to go back and paint the edge See how nice that edge looks? See, I don't have to paint that now with any of those paint markers. That's already done. So let's get our Dremel. Let's. Okay, right here on this edge, I have a little overflow. And so rather than sand that, I'm going to take the cuticle cutter and um, I have a little overflow on this edge right here. Right, right there. And so I'm going to take the cuticle cutters and trim that and then go back with the Take our duster, our Swiffer duster, and we And again, I'm always talking about when you have the sanded edges uh, to go over those edges with the gloss varnish. So that's what we are going to do now. And again, I don't need enough varnish to pour this into a cup. So I'm just putting it on the tip of my brush. I'm going right along that edge. Again, I forgot, I'm using the Deco Art Dura Clear Gloss Varnish. This is my go-to. 
Uh, this does come in different finishes, in satin, matte, and gloss. I am always using gloss because my molds are shiny, so everything I make has a sheen to it, and so you don't want to use a matte finish or a satin finish on something that's glossy. This was the edge with the overflow. All right, do you see that? So for all intents and purposes, this is done. So we need to put our rubber bumps on here. And again, I'm always using the 3M rubber bumps. I caution people about using cork because cork will dry out, cork will become brittle, and cork will start to crack up and make a mess on your table. Um, these are self-adhesive. Uh, they are clear, which means if this were a clear um, tray, uh, you wouldn't be able to see the bumps, and they are non-skid. So on my trays, I always put my bumps right over the spot where the handles are. So wherever the handles went, I cover up those handled spots with my rubber bumps. And then I always place one right in the middle. Okay, so. This tray is done.